guys welcome to around the cabin with the keepers of bushcraft I don't just want to show you outdoor cooking I want to show you everything really that's good to know when you're venturing in the great outdoors and as you can see at the moment I'm still at home we haven't even been out anywhere yet and that's because we need to do a kit check we need to look at what we're taking we need to do we know how to maintain um, our axes, our knives, and I'm going to walk you through the steps of that. Now I'm going to start off with the axe, a great tool. Um, this is a hatchet, a hand forged head on it. Some people prefer a tomahawk, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but do you know where to really sharpen it and maintain it before you go out? It should always be, all your tools before you go out into the field should be razor sharp and ready to use. Uh, sometimes out in the field you're not going to have time to use them um, we'll start off with the axe simply because for the woodsman an axe can be just a lifeline of a tool to have with you um, an axe edge primarily as you can see is pretty sharp anyway keeping that it's not a problem um, we use a sharpener I'll just use one of these. You can get a circular motion sharpener. A lot of you guys would have seen them. It's just like a round stone. I don't use them. I prefer to use this. And all I do with it is I hold it. I'll put the axe on it. And I draw it five times. And then I do it five times away from me. Trying to keep the angle that I need to keep, and I just literally cut across the stone like I want to cut it. And if you keep to that kind of angle, as you're trying to slice something, you won't go far wrong. You'll maintain a high, sharpened edge on there. You tend to find that you'll miss the bottom pieces. Just to put a bit more attention into the last bit, and that axe now is razor sharp guys um, trust me <laughs> the hickory handles these handles always benefit from a, a bit of oil on them um, any oil will do camilla oil anything like that and all i do is just take a little drop out not too much that'll do and i'll just rub it in I don't need much on there, just enough to cover it up because over time you'll build up quite a good wheel repeat on this and you can see that that will be absorbed right into that handle and don't forget to do the top edge of that. Now some people would wax this as well guys you can use candle wax on it and that'll stop it from rusting because hand forged stuff will always rust and you can wax that I don't bother with it personally because I'm using it all the time but do we know how to safely use the tool and that's what we're going to get to now and uh, I'm going to show you how to chop a, a bit of wood and different cutting techniques with this axe so whenever you're using a small forest axe or a hatchet or anything like this, you need a good surface to use it on. There's no point in hitting logs into, uh, into the old ground um, because the energy is absorbed in the floor. You want a solid surface so it's less energy. Now, the only thing that can arm you on an axe, guys, is that cutting edge. So keep your fingers well clear of it at all times. Um, and if you think you're uh, going to close you know you're going to be close to your finger rethink your position of your axe i've got a friend who's been a bushcrafter and i've been an outdoor woodsman for years and he won't use an axe it scares him to death and i don't blame him why because uh if you take this tool lightly he will bite you hard and uh you may want to keep all these at the end of the day so when you're splitting wood wood like this it's always got a natural grain that it wants to go to or run down to. So I put that on my chopping block and you can notice that I kneel beside it 
and I'm keeping my legs well clear of my hit zone which is going to be here I may even want to come back a little bit right out the way so if anything goes towards if I miss I'm chopping into the ground and not into my legs I want to come up but I come to the back of the axe because I want full swing and I want the weight of the head to do all the work so I'm not working hard here doing that and we get a nice split on there easy as simple as that no effort I can use a a technique it's like this bit of wood's not going to stay on here that well it's going to want to keep moving and shifting around so I use what they call a chicken stick I come in with me chicken stick like that and hold that bit of wood and then I hit and split and you can see the axe is in that position all I need to do is work the axe down into there to split that wood and this ain't the best of wood it's quite well seasoned oak it's oak's hard wood but it's a great wood for burning on your fire I can also use the axe with a baton you won't hurt it and that's the great thing about an axe is that it's really really good it's always worth checking to make sure you've got no fractures in your wood around the head of your axe because if you're swinging it and it flies off uh, they do travel quite far so just be a bit wary of that just gathering a little bit of firewood that I want to use for later but I'm going to split this down a little bit smaller in a minute and we're going to use our knife for that So I'll split up a bit of wood. So I'll split up a bit of wood using the axe there. And um, you can see that all times my hand is nowhere near the area where I'm swinging that axe. Just because you've got an axe, you don't need to be swinging it. You can actually even feather stick with an axe as long as you keep that edge sharp. And we're going to try and do that. Now bearing in mind this wood I've got is about two year old seasoned oak. So it's probably the toughest wood you can get. We'll have a little go and uh, see how we get. So you can probably see why the old uh, axe is a woodsman's favourite tool. Feather sticks and basic carving to chopping down the biggest of trees um, can all be done with this tool. So like I say, it's one tool that uh, you really don't want to be uh, going out without practising with and practice at home. Remember, the only thing on an axe that alert you is that. So keep your fingers, your legs and your arms well clear and if you can put something between you in the cutting zone more the better we'll be moving on to the all-time favorite of most bushcrafters and most outdoorsmen the knife so we're going to talk a little bit about knives um, the quality of the knife 
Uh, there's different grinds of knives uh, from a Scandinavian to a convex to a hollow grind and the woodsman mostly prefer a Scandinavian and hollow grind is a good work, a woodworking grind a convex grind is a great chopping grind it's good because it holds an edge convex grinds can be real hard to sharpen out in the field and even grinds like this you can see there's not much of a grind on it but there's a, a real simple tool for that as a simple pull through sharpener like that in your kit weighs nothing and all you do is you put your knife in there and you pull it through and that will maintain that edge for you while you're out in the field I do normally strop my knives but I normally strop them when I get back home um, or I can use my bow, my leather bow as a quick strop, quick fix out in the field if it's a longer stay than planned you look at the features of the knife that there is the cutting edge and that's the edge that will always uh, you want to keep your fingers so a lot of knives now have this extra toil in there so you can choke up and do fine carving work and then you come back for your power cuts and we're going to talk about a few little power cuts a few cuts that we can do so a quick sharpen and any knife always benefits from a little bit of oil on there I use a tough cloth which is a, a silicone once that's on there it really stays pretty water resistant for a long long time so I only use it now and again and um, I just keep them sharp so this is my choke up position got some nice bit of fat wood in a minute to have a little go at fat wood's quite hard but it burns really well it's great even if it's wet it'll burn and get your fire going so the different uses of a knife I'm going to show you some cutting techniques. <clears throat> I'll take the knife and I'll put it in a backward grip like that. Put the knife into my chest. Put this onto the wood where I want it to be. And I'll just pull back on my shoulders. So once again, the knife then is doing all the work. Well, my shoulder, sorry, is doing the work. And there's nothing else being moved. great little cutting technique to do that you just pull your shoulders back and that's what gives you the power in your knife and you can do some pretty big powerful cuts uh, it's real safe because it's nowhere near your body you should always cut away and if you've got any people in the area just tell them to move out the way so there's the knife in there I'll just pull back you can see that it's just shaving off bits of uh, bits of wood and that's a great cutting technique. The other cutting technique is where I want to cut a long bit by my side and a lot of people do that and it should all be in the shoulder motion so when the knife is down like that I just push my arm forward with the knife in that hand away from my body and that'll cut that. One of my favorite techniques and one of the safest is what I teach the kids is to literally put the knife into the knee and then you can just pull back and you can straight away see that it's just shaving the wood off and this is a great little uh, position for ladies to use their knife because it's safe and they can get more power on the cut you can also stick your knife into a solid object and once again if you've got the right type of blade just use that as a tool there for cutting back you can see that it will just literally start shaving and you can start feather sticking with that technique easy enough knife for splitting small kindling it's not a problem sometimes you have to do it if you've got an axe you shouldn't have to straight down through.
and that's where a full tang knife comes into its own one piece construction right through solid and uh, that's what you want folders are great I always carry a small folder non-locking carbon in my pocket razor sharp but your fixed blade knife is your lifeline out in the field and anyone going out there for long trips or even short trips stick a more in your bag and you won't regret it you never know when it comes in handy a good cutting tool going on to the finer work and the finer feather sticking with this type of knife um, you can see the extra toil there you get so you get one position and two position uh, so you're going to go to your second position because you're doing fine work now and we'll have a go at just a bit of fat wood here dug out some uh, trees many years ago and uh, so I come up I come up on my finer position and I just want to shave off bits and you can see that I've got full control now over the knife on what I want to do with it control over that that's the nice thing about having the extra toil is that you can do things like that I'm not sure whether I'll get this lit it's a bit windy actually and once again you can see the fire's gone up you won't believe how windy it is here guys see no problems with getting fire cheap lighters worth their weight in gold um, we'll be talking about some fire kits in a minute and the best ways of making fire so there's our axe that was our knife once again once we've used that tool we have a little look at it make sure there's no chipping nothing there get our pull through sharpener and we pull it through every time we use the tool just a quick to give it that razor's edge so it's shaving sharp guys so it is shaving sharp and then that just simply goes back in the sheath every time we've finished with it because that's the one tool you want to keep on you at all times if you can your axe comes with a nice sheath cover once you finish with that tool once again put that on there and keep it on there until you're going to use it again I'll be right back with you guys I want to talk about different styles of fire kit and preferred methods of making the fire. The old wind is picking up. Oh, sorry if you're getting any uh, wind sound. Um, I want to talk a little bit about fire. Um, fire outdoors. Uh, we take it for granted at home, don't we? We press a button and away we go. We turn on the stove and away it goes. And even to wood burning stoves. They're designed to burn wood, so they're actually quite easy to start. Out in the field, it can be a real problem to start a fire. I think I've got a plane or something going over the top of me. And I haven't even lit my fire yet, and already you see me signal, so I must be doing something right. There's loads of different ways and different methods of making fire out in the field. Um, there's a few that I always carry with me. A box of matches. I use good quality matches, cooks matches. Um, I'm not going to show you all how to strike a match, 
but if you bring the match towards you, get the light, cup the flame, and make sure it's good and strong before you put it to your fire. And that way, uh, you'll get a fire going with it. Try not to strike away from you, because even with a bit of wind, if you strike the matches away from you, they often go out like that. If you put too much force on them, you can break your match, like I've just done. But by holding it, cupping the flame, wait for it to be good and strong, it's still going. I can take that and put it to my fire. And it's quite windy today, but even though the matches, as long as you keep them dry, they never fail to get you a fire going out in the woods, if you know how to use them right. The other option, a ferrocean rod, that we all we all know what a ferrocean rod is, that creates a spark. And that spark's enough to get a bit of tinder going uh, in the field. Uh, you should always carry one of them, and you should always carry one of them separate to your fire kit. Because if you lose your fire kit, you have no means of making fire, and then you're back to making bow drills. And in a wet environment, you don't really want to be doing that nor do you in a survival situation that could be your lifeline I always carry that and I carry a few strike anywhere matches uh, in my pocket loose so I've always got a couple of means of still making fire a lighter cheap cheap old lighters they work well you can get a flame from them I prefer an, uh, an electric start than I do the wheel start because when you get wet hands you often find you won't be able to get a, a flame or spark from it and it won't work. Electric lighters, they seem to work quite well in the rain, so I carry an electric one of them. I don't need a sparker because I've already got that in my pocket. It's all about thinking outside of the box and your best chances of getting things happening for you when you're out. Different Tinder cards, you can see in this little kit, I've got tinder card and that's a great way of getting a fire going. Tinder card, it's a waxed card, uh, works really really well. You've also got your wet fire tinders, I don't really use them but I have got one in this kit and you've got to watch because they can dry out and they don't work after uh, a bit of time. And then inside these little capsules normally I carry a bit of cotton wool. I've just emptied this one out, put a few matches in there, strike anywhere matches. But normally I would have some cotton wool, because cotton wool soaked in Vaseline is probably the best fire starter you'll get on the market. Um, everybody's got it at home somewhere. A little bit of cotton wool, rub some Vaseline on it and put it in one of them little capsules. Are you laughing? Take a spark, all you do, fluff it up and it quite easily bump away you go. So there's some different methods of making fire. Um, the trouble with making fire outdoors, you've got to be so careful, especially for you guys over in America, is it the dry season? You don't want to be making fires in the dry season if you can help it. Um, that's when you move on to stoves and other types of different stoves. And um, I'll show you uh, a couple of stoves later on that I've got that I uh, enjoy using. Um, so that's some of our kit for fires and making fires and we'll have a little go, we'll, uh, we'll knock up a bit of a, a thingy in a minute and we'll see what we can do with it. I'll show you the tinder card and I'll show you the uh, feather stick and the best ways of lighting them.
So there you can see just a few methods and ways of making fire and uh, you can see how effective the old birch bark, silver birch bark is probably the most best uh, tinder you can get out in the wild. It's got a natural um, oil on it and it burns super hot. A great way of making fires. So once we get our fire going, and there's loads of different ways and different methods of making fires and different types of fires you can use out in the field. I'm not going to cover them today or in this episode. What I do want to talk about is containers because when we get home we put our pot on and away we go and we boil some water or we put the kettle on and we make ourselves a cup of tea. Good old Englishman. But what I really want to talk about is what the different types of containers and what really you should put in your bag and what's a good option for you. Just got three containers here. Um, one's aluminium or aluminium, I think you call it over there. Um, and these ain't that good on an open fire. Uh, I've had a few of them split open while I've been cooking on them before. And um, I would try and stay well clear of that. Get yourself stainless steel. Uh, this is the Zebra Billy can. It comes with a nice handle and you can make pot hangers and all that. Um, which will be in my next video, uh, making pot hangers and setting up your basic campfire. Stainless steels, a nice thick walled stainless steel with a lid is great. You can see it's a little bit burnt in there. Of my popcorn video that I did, that didn't actually come out that well. Um, but these stainless steel pots are worth their weight in gold. They're not the lightest of things in your bag. But I'll tell you what, sometimes you've just got to man up and carry them. And once again, titanium. Titanium is another really good one. Um, titanium, you stick that right in the open fire and uh, no problems with that. A lot of people ask, um, or, or I've been saying that, you know, open fires for them are a bit of a problem. And... Um, We'll have a little look at a few stoves that you could carry out in the field when you're out and about. Stove cooking is as good as really outdoor cooking because once again um, you've got to take wind factor into account. There's no point in lighting a stove when it's really really windy because it will just take the heat. As soon as you light it, it takes the heat right out of it. So your pots and pans will be sat there all day waiting to boil water and make it safe. So we'll have a little look at a few stoves. Old gas stoves like this, and the old camping type stoves, be a real benefit. Uh, you get about six hours of burn time with uh, six and a half hours with a canister that size on this stove. So actually it's pretty good. Uh, one canister would probably last you a trip. Turn on the gas, light it, and away it goes. Crack it right open and let it boil. Yeah, it's a great safe way. Would benefit from a windshield. Uh, normally out in the woods you'd make one of them out of a few logs or uh, some branches stuck up just to give you a bit of shelter. Just make sure when you take it off you don't burn your fingers because your handles can get hot on these. Um, you should really wear gloves. that water is uh, starting to uh, bubble so you know that it's getting hot and the stove is working I 
uh, my favourite type of cooking is over a stove. I really enjoy it, guys. Um, I just don't think you can beat cooking on a stove. I do enjoy the open fire, but stoves are special. This stove is completely inexpensive. Um, I think the whole setup, I've got a light that goes on it as well, so I can actually have a night light. Uh, it cost me about £17 for the two. Um, the gas cylinders are a couple of quid each, so it's not expensive. Really windy today, I picked the wrong day to do this video on, I'll tell you. see that it's dying to go, it's going to go to a rolling boil in a minute and that, if you've taken the water out of the river or the stream, it would be safe to drink then if you can get it up to that rolling boil. Yeah, it's starting to go now. We've got the bubbles. You can see the bubbles inside there. Just by putting the, the old lid on, it keeps all the heat in there, sort of bring it up to temperature a hell of a lot quicker. You can see that the old hole here I've got is steaming quite brave, and away we go. But just by putting the lid on, did you see how it made an impact? Kept all the heat in there and that heat couldn't escape. So by putting the lid on, your water will always boil quicker. I'd boil that for three minutes, uh, keeping it going, and no matter where I am then, in the wild, that water, in theory, should be safe to drink. Um, just be a bit cautious about chemicals and things like that in the water. Um, you still could be drinking them, so be a bit careful with that. We're going to turn the heat off. And that's it. There's our stove, and you can see that that's red hot. That will cool down in a minute. Let's put that to one side and you don't want to touch that until it's cooled down properly and before you put it back in your pack. And since I'm not into wasting water, well, we better have a hot chocolate while we're out here. Since it is getting cold. My favourite. Guys, cheers. That is my favourite hot chocolate. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Around the Cabin uh, with the Keepers of Bushcraft. 
our hub bridge can link the um, gaining camp in permission video that's already on my YouTube. Um, hopefully he can put that one up. Uh, it seems to be the in question, I think with this summer season starting and um, people wanting to get out of their hammocks and their tents. I appreciate over in America it's not really a problem for you guys, um, but over in the UK and other parts of the world, uh, most land is owned and it can be real difficult for the wild camp, the bush crafter, or uh, the guy who wants to go out and enjoy the countryside just to be able to go out and have a walk around. And I did a video on it on my old YouTube channel, uh, on my YouTube channel, sorry, um, that's Fox360. The video is on there. I'm open rich. We'll be able to pull it over so you can all watch that one as well on the end of this episode of Around the Cabin with the Keepers of Bushcraft. So guys, with that in mind, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Next time I'll be out, we'll be looking at fire and fire setups. And um, well, if the planning goes right, I would hope to think um, we could really look at other things as well from making pot hangers to ideal camp locations to even finding maybe a few wild edibles while we're out on the estate so from me and all the team around the cabin stay safe and have fun we'll see you all on the next one don't forget to tune in for castle mum and crew uh, they'll be opposite fridays to me and uh, she's a proper cook where I'm just a, a pretend one. So guys with that in mind, I'll see you all on the next one. <laughs>